up guys this is josh aka casket 15 another weekly comic breakdown video of what i bought for this is the 26th so uh we're gonna start out today as always with night terrors um so today was the release of night terrors number two um it was a good issue really enjoyed it um Continue to tell the story. They brought back uh, the original Sandman from DC. It was really cool. Um, the character added a lot to it. It was a really good book. I'm really enjoying the main series of Night Terrors. And definitely recommend it. Um, next is uh, Night Terrors Action Comics. Um, I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed Supergirl's story in it the most. Um, the Kent family, I guess you would say, the Superman family um, story was... It was still pretty good. It was a, uh, it's really funny because the cover is very misleading because the uh, the two characters on the cover are in two different stories. So, um, but it was a good read. Uh, here is the Action Comics red variant cover, which thankfully, for my wallet, this is the last week with these red covers. So I'm glad I got to get them all. They're really pretty. So, but being on cardstock, they're a little bit more expensive. So, it's just a lot. Um, we have Angel Breaker number one. Not gonna lie, no disrespect to anybody who worked in this comic, but I skimmed it. I don't really know the character. Started going through it and it just really wasn't my read. I'll probably pick up number two just to finish the story, but yeah, it just wasn't my thing. Um, here's the red, black, and white variant for that one. Then we have the uh, Night Terrors Detective Comics. Now this was an interesting read. It was from uh, Commissioner Gordon. It was from his perspective. Um, just a really kind of interesting dark story. So it was really, I enjoyed it. And there's the red, black, and white variant for Detective Comics. Next, um, probably my second favorite next to the main Night Terror series this week was Harley Quinn. Um, I enjoy Harley Quinn's character. I'm not a huge fan, but, uh, I do enjoy the art they use for her and stuff a lot. And, um, this is a really good issue. Um, it's just kind of Harley being Harley. She, you find out pretty quick then in the comics, she is not afraid of anything. Uh, until the end when you finally get the true reveal, which is real fun. So uh, here is the variant for that one, which is probably my favorite red, black, and white variant this week. And then last for Night Terrors this week was uh, Night Terrors Titans number one. This one's also was a really fun read. Um, just really like the story kind of had a wow and then the same twist at the end um there's a character they follow throughout the book and i'm i'm guessing you're not supposed to know who she is i'm curious to find out who she is so and there's the titans night terror comic it's also a really good one this week and that is it for the night terrors books now on to some other publishers first we'll have marvel we'll start out with uh what if dark Spider Gwen. Um, it's very interesting. It is pretty much just uh, the story of Gwen dying from uh, Amazing Spider Man 121. It's twisted to where Peter saves Gwen. He dies instead of her. And it's her kind of recovering and trying to deal with Peter's death, find out he's Spider Man, and also wanting to get revenge on the Green Goblin for what he did. Um, it's a very good issue. Um, it's kind of, it's very funny and misleading in a way that they have Spider-Gwen on the front uh, because Spider-Gwen uh, is not in the book. I mean, there there is some Spider-Man Gwen moments and they even have like a little cool nod to Spider-Gwen, but the character's not in there. So it was kind of interesting to me that they called it Spider-Gwen instead of just calling it like Gwen Stacy because it's actually the Gwen Stacy from that universe. It's not our, the Spider-Gwen that we know. Um... And this is the variant cover for it, which I loved. So I had to pick that one up as well. But it was a good. Uh, once again, I really enjoyed it. Um, it won't be a series or anything. But anything where we have some kind of Gwen Stacy content, I just really enjoy your character. All right, next is The Incredible Hulk number two. Uh, this one continued to be just a really fun read from the first one. Um, very dark. Um, gritty. Just, just kind of gross almost. Not, not gore, not as much gore really, but uh, 
very just um disturbing almost for the character so it was really good I'm, I'm curious to see where they're going with the story uh next is ultimate invasion number two this is also was a really good read um it was it was definitely different because whereas the first issue followed the 616 universe and the maker traveling to this different universe this story stuck with the different universe the whole time and we didn't really see any of the 616 characters so i'm curious if they're going to bounce back and forth or if this is just strictly following the maker's character so uh but once again fun um just good marvel comic next we have uh hellfire gala 2023 number one so they do a hellfire gala every year where the mutants kind of like have a ball where they're celebrating being a mutant and their you know their contribute like contributions to humans and just trying to like you know mend that bond with humans that mutants have and um and this one of course just like when you anytime you try to have a big party but you're trying to impress people everything goes wrong so uh this also introduces uh this is the first introduction of miss marvel as a mutant in the mcu which is or not mcu the mc the comics uh, i'm really curious to see her solo comic uh, i think it's called miss marvel the new mutant i believe um it's gonna be super interesting uh, the actress who plays Kamala Khan in the Miss Marvel TV show is actually writing on the book. And she just seems to be really passionate about it. So it's really awesome to see the actors from the show come in and take over. So I'm really excited to read that book. Next is Silk number three. Um, I still need to get caught up on this series, so I did not get to read this issue specifically. Love Silk. These pirate covers are hilarious. They're just awesome. So uh, we'll pick it up and read it eventually. Pretty soon, hopefully, here. Uh, and that is all for Marvel. Next, we're moving to Image. Just have one. And it is the continuation of the story Tenement from the Bone Orchard Mythos. Um, it's a company that they're doing just strictly horror stories. And it's just kind of, it's not gore or even like necessarily jump scare horror. It's just kind of like the um, psychological. Um, they've done, they started out their series with a graphic novel. And then went into a five-part series called the uh, 10,000 Black Feathers, and now they, they're going into Tenement. So this second issue uh, was a good read. Uh, the pace finally started. It was a good pace in the first issue, but it was just kind of the story was slow-paced, but it was still a really good pace with the characters to be to get you entertained. Uh, this one picks up the pace, and by the end of this, you start to get more of a big picture of what's going on. Uh, you're still kind of in the dark uh, overall, but uh, it gives you an idea. You start to get in that direction, so... Yeah, it was really, really good read. Um, ready for issue three already. I really enjoy these kind of psychological horror stories. Next is Alice Never After, number one. Um, I'm working through the Alice Ever After series, which was the prequel series to this, which I recommend if you want to pick this up, reading that one. It's a five-issue series. Um, I'm sure I think the graphic novel for it's out already. If not, it should be out soon. Uh, with this release, and I imagine it's already out, um, but... So far, uh, Ever After has been a good read, so I'm really looking forward to picking this up and uh, reading this and the sequel issues too. I think this is also going to be a five issue miniseries, so really looking forward to this. Um, the art's awesome on the cover, so there's some really cool uh, Ginny Frizen art on the variant covers. That I don't have, but I'll probably pick up eventually. Uh, and last, this is also from Boom Studios, is The Neighbors number five. This is another one. Now that I'm five issues in, um, I really need to catch up because I'm behind on it. And uh, it really just, the, the art and the covers appealed to me from this series. So I just started picking them up. And it's going to be one that I'll definitely uh, read pretty soon here. Hopefully I can give you guys a good review when 6 comes out. I'll be caught up. can give you all the reviews of them. So, yeah. Uh, that is it for this week, guys. Um, pretty stacked week. Um, next week hopefully should be a little lighter. We'll see. Um, one of them I didn't pick up this week that I meant to. And I will pick it up. I might add it to next week's. If not, I'll just mention it here. Is World Tree number 4 is once again another one that I need to catch up with, but um, it's written by James Tynan IV, who wrote Something's Killing the Children. Uh, he wrote a few others I really enjoy. Uh, one of his first, well, not maybe not his first one, but one of his uh, big ones where I first found out about him was called Mimetic. Um, he did a trilogy series of like the world is ending different stories, and each one had a three-part book, and it told different like world-ending stories. Um, and Mimetic was the first one. Really enjoyed it. Um, I need to read 
this third one, which is Eugenic. Um, the second one, I'm completely blanking on the name right now, but I also read it and really enjoyed it. So definitely recommend picking up anything by James Tynan. He wrote on Batman Eternal for a while. He's just he wrote a series. I think it was a three part series, maybe called The Closet. It was a horror story. He just he's very good at writing horror, so I definitely recommend him. But yeah, guys, uh, with that. I will catch you guys next week. Thanks. Please like and subscribe.